I grew up in an environment where my parents worship many deities. I was taught to offer joysticks and burn incense during festive occasions. As we were poor, I questioned why we wasted our little financial resources needlessly. I was, I was determined not to follow their footsteps and to be a good person and a free thinker and not concern myself with any religion. Uh, at the age of 20, I started my teaching career. I had low self-esteem because of my background. But I had a, my career went well. Soon I was selected to be part of the pioneer team to teach in Singapore International School in Hong Kong. After my eight years stint in Hong Kong, I was appointed head of PE department in a secondary school back in Singapore. I realized many of my students had low self-esteem, just like me. As part of motivation exercise, to help my students to gain a sense of worth and to raise the morale, I organized a trip for my students to climb the highest mountain in Southeast Asia, Mount Kinabalu. The rationale was your altitude determined, is determined by your attitude. I was overjoyed when one teachers joined in with just only 16 students signed up. Two weeks before our, two weeks before our trip, it was reported that a 16-year-old girl from England died up in Mount Kinabalu. She was lost and separated from the parents and she died from exposure from extreme cold. Then I saw the danger of climbing high mountains. Since I fully paid for the trip, we didn't call it off. So after months of preparation, we arrived at Mount Kinabalu. Mount Kinabalu is about 4,000 meters high. Typically, all climbers would have dinner at 3,000 meters, sleep at Laban La Rata Lodge, and then at 2 a.m. to start the ascent to the summit, just in time to see the sunrise. All went well until an hour or so after dinner. Several students and teachers started to have severe headache and vomiting. Initially, I told them uh, those were signs of uh, altitude sickness, and they simply had to relax and acclimatize. But the situation got worse. So I had to get the portal to carry the affected students and teachers to a lodge at a lower altitude. I was exhausted from accompanying each one, each one down and then climb back up. Feeling totally helpless, I called on God for help. I said something like that, God, I cannot be responsible if any of my teachers or students would die here. I really need help, God. Keep us all safe and let us go back to Singapore safely. I called up that final ascent and told all to sleep. Thankfully, nothing untoward happened. All of us came back to Singapore safely. After the trip, I was prompted to read the Bible. I wanted to get the best copy, so I went to Borders Bookshop. But to my amazement, there were so many versions. Didn't know what to get. I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't end up getting a copy. And one of my Christian teachers gave me a New Living Translation Bible. I started reading it, but I couldn't understand a single thing. I thought this is really difficult stuff. Why so many repetition? Why keep praising the Lord? No, no wonder nobody wants to become a Christian. However, I was. I felt I needed to go to the church. Again, there were so many churches in Singapore. I didn't know which one to go. One day, I took my daughter to Kalang Theatre for a ballet performance. There, we bumped into a Chinese tutor from Hong Kong. We lost contact with her, but the moment I saw her and I asked which church she worshipped in, she mentioned the name of the church and I felt that was the church for me to go to. I was, when I went there, I was pleasantly surprised there was present music and at first I thought it was somebody's perfume but then I realized it's God's fragrance. At the end of the sermon, Pastor David Hong invited people to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I put out my hand and then Pastor David asked those who raised up their hand to stand. The moment I stood up, tears flowed non-stop from my eyes. I was there to say the sinner's prayer and commit myself to follow Jesus. After that, something supernatural happened. The Bible no longer 
was difficult to understand. Everything I read made sense. I was so filled with awe. How could I have missed such gem for so many years? In year 2003, I was appointed vice principal of a primary school. The school that I was posted to had many problems. But every time I read the Bible, ideas and solutions just left off its pages. I was able to help my students, teachers, and parents resolve many issues. Soon I attended a training on healing in church. I saw many people healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. The most dramatic was through a prayer God gave me in a dream. In that dream, I saw someone totally submerged in a tub of water. Only his face was over water. There were many tubes of his body. The impression was that man was afflicted by some demonic power. And I spoke these words, The blood of Jesus covers, delivers, and heal you. Then I woke up and was, realized it was 3 a.m. The next day, a former colleague of my wife called and told her that her husband was in hospital. He suffered multiple organ failure and was in coma at one stage. We visited him and his wife told us that he had pneumonia. As a result, there was water retention in his lungs and all over his body. The hospital had used nine supporting machines and many tubes to suck up water from his body. Then I realized that this was the man in my dream. So I shared Christ with him and prayed for him. He made tremendous improvement every day. Thereafter, a week or, after a week or so, we were expecting me to be discharged. But he was placed in isolation ward. I visited him at the isolation ward and prayed for him. As I was driving home, I asked God why after all the improvement he had made, then he was sent to isolation ward. God uh, uh, impressed upon me that why I did not say the prayer in my dream. So the next day I went over to him and said a prayer over him. Shortly after that, he was discharged from hospital and doctor told him it was a miracle. His kidney rejuvenated. Since then, I've witnessed to many people of broken bones, sleep disc, failing eyesight and many other ailments. Jesus Christ is indeed our, he our healers. Three years ago, I felt God called me to a marketplace ministry. I left a secure government job to do something absolutely new to me. By the grace of God, many doors have been opened to me. I appeared on TV five times last year. Even a French magazine featured about me and my work. And now I have the honor to, have, to be the world number one golf club uh, as my, one of my corporate clients. And a few other corporate clients as well have uh, engaged my services after just three years into my new venture. I'm truly in awe of God's faithfulness and grace and all the best and the best is yet to come. I pray my testimony will encourage you to trust and follow Jesus Christ faithfully. All glory to God.